Let's take a look at transactions in QuickBooks to find out a little bit more about how to enter them. To enter a new transaction, open the Create menu. The first transaction we're going to look at is an invoice. Invoices are created when you want to tell a customer how much money they owe you and why. This is one of the ways QuickBooks lets you record a sale. The first thing that QuickBooks asks you to enter is the customer's name. The next section of the transaction is where you enter the date or when the transaction occurred. Then you enter the products and services that you sold, so what you're charging the customer for. Then up here at the top right, you're able to see how much the transaction is for in total. So when you're looking at an invoice, you can see that it's divided up into four primary areas the who of the transaction, the when of the transaction, the what of the transaction, and then finally, the how much. Now let's go ahead and cancel this and go to a very different type of transaction. I'm going to open up a check. A check is entered when you spend money. So this is us writing a check to a vendor. Here you can see that the transaction is remarkably similar to an invoice, and in fact, it follows the same sorts of procedures. Up here at the top left, you see the who for this check, so who the check was written to. You also see when the check was written. Then down here in the account details, you can record what the check was written for, so what it is that you're buying. And then up at the top right, Finally, you see how much the check was written for. So even though these transactions are incredibly different, QuickBooks still lays out the transaction in the same way. Now let's go back over to the invoice. When entering information on a transaction, such as customer, QuickBooks makes it easier for you because it can recall information specific to that customer from your customers list. Right here for the customer, you can click the customer's drop down arrow and choose from a list of customers, or you can simply type the customer's name. So if you want to create an invoice for somebody whose last name is Cho, we could type in C-H-O, and there's our customer, Mark Cho. Just click their name, and it loads their information. So here we can see their email address and billing address already plugged in for us. Then there's also the date here in the middle. And now you just enter what it is that you're selling to the customer. Again, you can choose what it is you're selling to them from the products and services list, or you can type in a new product or service right here. I'm just going to put in a very simple invoice and enter services as the product or service. Here you can enter a description of what it is that you're selling to your customer. And then finally here for the amount, this is the amount that you're charging them. You can continue to add more and more products and services until you're done. There are some buttons that are common to most transactions. Here you can see Cancel, which cancels the invoice completely. The Clear button gets rid of all the data you've entered, so you're left with an empty transaction. There's also Print or Preview if you want to print this invoice out. Here you can also mark an invoice to be printed later. You'll often also see this option to make a transaction recurring and customizing allows you to change the look and feel of the invoice that you send to your customer. And you can even save your progress on a transaction and continue working on it with the Save button. There are other save options though, such as Save and Close, Save and Send a Link, Save and New, and Save and Send to email the invoice to a customer right away. I'm going to Save and Close now. Now you're ready to record most transactions into QuickBooks since they follow the same template.